You and I have had a great relationship from the beginning of this mystery school. You've let a few things fly at me. We had some fun with it. I love your directness. And one of the things that I really appreciated is, yeah, you were so direct. You came into me one day and you were just like, all right, that's it. I have control issues. And that's the authority problem. I've been studying the Course for a long time, but here I want to let go of it. Maybe you could tell us a little bit. What comes to your mind when I ask you about that? Well, I think I came into this world uh, wanting to be recognized for knowing things. I remember even at first grade that started. And it continued. And so I went to graduate school for years and became a college teacher. And I raised three kids in my own. So I had to know a lot of things, and I had I felt as if I had to be in control, not that I had to be in control. And I think there was a desire in me always wanting to know the answer. And so that developed a habit in me of closing off a discussion or thoughtfulness about things, I just felt that I have to make a decision right now, and it has to be the right answer. So I've had really good teachers and have studied, uh, I've had a whole class on uh, the uh, decision-making issues that are in later in the uh, course. But I couldn't see until very recently, in fact, in my discussions with you, that it is this old habit of wanting to have the answers instead of waiting for the Holy Spirit to provide the answers for me. So I really appreciate being here and seeing how contemplative you guys are about making your decisions. That's been very useful to me and it's helped me realizing, I don't know. <laughs> That's beautiful, thank you. That's really sweet to see, you know, you've really studied this course for 20, 30 years, and you just keep giving yourself over these three weeks to just saying whatever you're thinking and practicing, so, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes to you. <laughs> thank you, Myrna. Well, our next offering is going to be um, a brief song called uh, Sanctuary and a beautiful poem from Rumi called Guest House. But before we go over to our, our next student, Cindy, I would just like to say something that stuck with me since I met Cindy and I feel it's just worthy to share is that she's actually brand new, at least to David, maybe the course, don't quote me on that, but she was listening to David, I think in May, and just was like blown away by the authenticity and basically said, well, okay, before I get into this, I want to make sure he's consistent. So she went back 25 years on YouTube and found talks that said exactly the same thing. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I'm going to this mystery school. <laughs> it's not changing. It's consistent. It must have been there for 2,000 years and even beyond that. So... So with that depth, I'll pass you over to Cindy, who will share with us. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Yeah, this little song grew to mean so much to me throughout the past many years. I remember the first time I heard it, and it just spoke to my heart, made me cry. And so I'd like to share that with you today. It's become my daily mantra and a song I sometimes even wake myself up in the middle of the night singing it, so. <sighs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. 
thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. As Jason mentioned, this is a poem by Rumi called The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each one has been sent as a guide from beyond. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.